We are back. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark with you for a little LCK preview action. And even more so than the changing of tides in the LEC, the LCK. If you remove T1, a very different looking league across the board for the other nine teams. It feels like outside of the picture perfect puzzle that T1 has put together and someone was using super glue, magical super glue to keep them all together. The rest of the LCK, wipe the board. All the pieces have been jimble jambled all around and placed in new places, new faces. Let's get to it. The LCK 2024 going to be a new world. And much like EU, there are still plenty of rookies getting the promotion, starting when you look at these top laners, both clear and perfect coming in with different expectations. I think we're expecting a better finish out of KT Rolster than we are Liv Sandbox, no question about that. And then guys like Dinden and Morgan staying put on the same squad, becoming faces of Nang Shim and Freddie Breon, respectively. And I think that this is a good place to start in the top, you know, top laner list and look at it and, and evaluate and say, these are the guys that if you take lightly at any point, you know, you sleep on them in any type of matchup, you're not prepared, they can beat you. They can take it to you in that matchup and, and get the advantage for their squad. A player like Morgan, there's a lot of bad, but there's also some good in there, especially the Lord when he's piloting that Renekton seems to be one of the only effective ones that you see nowadays. That's the sacrifice to be Lord Morgan. Renekton has to be uh, your best <laughs> champion. But my eyes are drawn immediately to number five on this list. KDF Doodoo. We heard all about the Kwangdong Freaks being the main scrim partner for T1 during the end of their world championship run. And all you have to look at is last year, uh, I know... Bulldog steals the headlines for KDF, but Dudu was getting solo kills left, right, and center on most of the top laners in the LCK, so another year of growth under his belt. I'm excited. It's tough because obviously it was such a, a roller coaster ride trying to keep track of trying to get in on that young hype for the KDF squad. And again, so much of it, as you outlined, did go towards Bulldog, but under the radar is what Dudu was doing in that top lane, providing that type of thrill, that little bit of firepower on top of it for a team that is looking to change their fortunes, looking to rebound in this 2024 LCK split. And never question, even if it's a long-term project, the scouting master that is CV Max. And if a lot of these guys are returning, I got faith in him and I got faith on this team being playoff bound again. A rascal with a lot of young players around him on DRX, but he is the actual solo kill king when it comes to top laners. And then when you get to the upper echelon here, Keen and Doran. Keen replacing Doran, but we got Doran in that two spot because you look at his whole body of work for 2023, and other than Zeus, and even in that head to head against Zeus, he was the most consistent top laner in the whole LCK. It has to be some respect paid to Doran. And I know that, you know, internationally, it seems like the very boring, the most boring type of top lane option out of the LCK is talking about Doran and what he does well. But you laid it out. I think the consistency was certainly there more so for a player like Doran compared to Keen last year. I think even when you're looking at it, you had more moments where you're saying there was a, a Doran pop-off or a clutch play that contributed to the win for Gen G from Doran than you did say for Keen with KT Rolster. Even if he is a power player, a game changer in that top lane, there is no bigger game changer right now in the game of League of Legends than Mr. Zeus up in the top side. Hot on a new contract, hot as a world champion. My man is ready to return to defend the title. Yeah, and it, I mean, based on world's performances, it is a pretty sizable gap between Zeus and any other top laner in the LCK. Not to say Keen and Doran can't maybe challenge him, but uh, it is his throne to be taken from to kick things off and get used to T1 members being near or at the very top of these lists as we swap into the jungle area where we actually don't have a T1 player at number one, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll start with some of the bottom first. Again, rookies coming in. You got Sponge and Lucid, who are probably the two most hyped up junglers coming in from Challengers. Have had some head to head matchups uh, in the DRX and D plus Challenger squads, respectively. And they could be making some noise as that next generation 
And Lucid has been a player that I think a lot of people in tune with the LCK scene and the upcoming prospects have looked at and have identified as someone that can step in right away to a squad, be a difference maker, and show that he is going to be a superstar of the future in this league. I can't wait to see it right now. Alongside a big-time playmaking mid laner in Showmaker could be a big ticket for D+. And I know... Ahead of him, people are less excited about PO6 return to the LCK. But listen, he won a world championship and people weren't hyped about him going over to the LCS. Then he tries to drag the corpse of Team Liquid to some semblance of success at the world championship. He shows up incredibly against T Wet on Lee Sin. He drags them to a game three on Kindred. So I, I, I don't know why people are that low on PO6 coming into 2024. Flat out, the only member of Team Liquid doing any share of good work at this last world champion that they did attend. Yes, he was the one popping off, of course, on that signature Kindred pick, and that's what you're looking for. Heading back to the LCK, how he played back in Korea, back home, all these type of things are those positive angles that you look at for a player like Piosik. I think this can be a, a rebounding year for him. And again, not too far away from that pinnacle of that world championship. I know that year is still a little bit more muddy when you really dive into it. But this is a player that still, I think, has the best awaiting him in his career if he can get to that level. And, you know, with a lot of veterans and a lot of former championship players in Deft and Barrel being reunited, uh, hopefully he keeps up that level. We're given a new nickname. It's Granddaddy Cuz heading into this year with this young Kwang Dong lineup. They haven't really had a veteran presence since these younger guys have come in. So I'm excited to see what Cuz can do to take these guys under his wing. And remember, Cuz was first team all pro status jungler coming in that summer split. I think that's a lot of people are forgetting about sleeping on that fact that what Cuz did, the body of work that he put out through the majority, especially that summer split for KT Rolster, one of the top options that you can get loading in, has picked up all that experience, as I said, going with that young lineup with KDF. I think that this is going to be an opportunity where it is really on Cuz to take the reins. And at times with KT Rolster, when he was that guy dictating it, making that play, that's when they were looking their best. Even if he's not playing carry junglers, if he's on the more supportive tanking style, he's still going to be in charge of how the game plays. And we know he's got one of the purest smite keys in the entire LCK. Peanut's a spot ahead of him. I think the old general that he's trans transitioned into is the perfect fit now on this new Hanwha Life roster who desperately needed some focus and communication help last year. Peanut's going to bring that in. Then we get to these top two where I know owner, what a bounce back he had at the world championship after he slumped through the majority of the summer split. But Canyon is Canyon. And I feel like Canyon is going to be refreshed and revitalized on this Gen G squad. And even on a down year with D plus, he split the player of the split honors with Zeka with most MVPs in the whole league. There is so much of a difference, and unfortunately for Owner, so long in that period of that difference between the low of lows and the highs of highs that we got to see from him. I think if you're looking towards 2024, you can bank on much more so towards how he ended the year and performed and rebounded in his individual form, as well as how he was performing and communicating with the rest of that T1 roster. And of course, most importantly, Faker in the mid lane as the big power play. You do got to give that credit over to Canyon. As you outlined before, the player, the games that he was racking up last year on a, a D-plus Kia squad that fluctuated in their level of performance, Canyon really didn't. He provided that level of output, that level of play. And as you said, adding in on top of it, the Gen G angle, the system that he's going into, where he really is set up to thrive in so many different ways, whether that is the setting up the plate for the rest of the players on Gen G, or taking all the food for himself and hogging it down like a buffet. My man Canyon, prime in that top spot for the jungle. It feels like there should be less reliance on Canyon being the sole win condition like it was for the last two plus years on D plus Kia. There's going to be so many other avenues to play through for Genji, which should theoretically on paper only level up Canyon for 2024. Mid lane action, we've got some... This is kind of where the shakeups happened the least in terms of mid laners finding new homes. It was more players around them switching. And even when you look 
uh, towards that bottom. Really the only actual rookie coming in is Sitab over on DRX, which we know that it's mostly rookies alongside Rascal and a conservative eight spot for him. Uh, again, we're, this is just the Kwangong freaks hype show because i'm highlighting bulldog in here at number six he's always the focal point we talk about them but he is potentially a new next generation maybe potentially knocking on that top four godfather of mid lanes and one of the things that i loved that we saw from bulldog last year was no fear in adapting his champion pool willing to bring things in practicing them take them to the game stage try it out what is hot what is fresh and i think that that is going to be something that is appreciated not only in the whole scene of league of legends with what we've been getting as far as stale metas but certainly in the lck gonna be a breath of fresh air and i think he's got the raw mechanical skill and instincts to take it to that next level i'm going big on bulldog this year and again it's like 18 there's still plenty of room for this guy to be growing but this whole top six they're all on the same squads as last year but again very different players around them zeka was tied with canyon for most mvp points in summer and i know his champion pool is something people are always talking about but it wasn't the same world champion Zeka level but you saw moments you had games that he completely took over we just need it more consistently there was enough there that I think you could look at it and you could look at the general situation around Hanwha life and you said, okay, well, I want to still see him. I still think there's stuff, there still is potential to get even further output from this player. That is where you're going for on this angle for Hanwha life. I think individually, you do got to take some of that onus on yourself and your own performance. If you're Zeka, adding in that steady, the general, as long as he's not getting a little bit too hypey, Mr. Peanut can be a wonderful addition to help prop up Zeka's individual performance as well. And a big question mark on this list is what does Showmaker look like without Canyon beside him? He's never done it in his career. Obviously, there's going to be more responsibility on his shoulders, especially with a rookie jungler coming in. So how does he step into that more of a veteran leadership role? And how does that affect his individual play? I think the one of the factors that we just won't know until we see the season play out is how invested a player like Showmaker is into the season. We talk so much about what the, the game state is, what 200 years of Riot game design has come through and upset Showmaker recently in solo queue, all those type of things. But I think the angle of this D-plus Kia roster, especially with Lucid coming in to replace Canyon and really take over as this hot jungle prospect, I've got a lot of feeling that Mr. Showmaker is going to be invested in not only getting everything right for the team, getting everything right to start Lucid on that right path, but making it a formidable mid-jungle duo. Now, we couldn't how Worlds played out the level that Faker was at. There's no way you could take him out of that number one spot. The run he had against some of the best mid laners in the world, the resurgence the team had when he just came back into the lineup. But let's not take away one bad series out of Chovy for how good he was for 2023. This guy is still one of the best mid laners in the world and still deserves respect. I felt so confident telling everybody to put it finally to rest. The Chokey memes are no more. I'll allow it for 2024. You have to leave that door open, unfortunately, given the way things ended for Genji and Chovy specifically. But that does not discount the whole year, the years of work that he has put in to accelerate himself to this conversation, to be a legitimate player that can contest for the number one mid laner in the LCK against a legacy like Faker. Unfortunately for him, you look at what happened this year for Faker, the impact without him in the lineup and his return to form back in the lineup individually is one of those things that you've got to be looking at got to be paying respect fourth title for the man he's taken the top spot in the throne head to head lately chovy has gotten the better of faker but every other match internationally t1 has proven time and time again that they are the epitome of class when it comes over to the lck bot lane action which is stuffed full of veteran ad carries a lot of them in new areas heading into this year and even guys like envy and henna are guys we've seen around the last couple of the years maybe they swap to a few different teams but holding it down in the bottom half of this we were worried 
that maybe Teddy wouldn't be finding himself a roster spot, but DRX sneaking in to drop him in, and he he was good. He was kind of stuck in ELO hell at times on Live Sandbox, but Teddy is absolutely still a guy that you can count on to carry some games. He's not free of all the things that were wrong last year for his squad, but certainly a player that, as you mentioned, for the most part was the one pulling all the way, and even then some for the squad to try and get it done. Obviously, not enough in the end, but the player that showcased the raw skill, that game form on stage, everything else is up to the task at the LCK level and is one of those players, maybe not at the full end of the, of the spectrum that we were talking about at the prime of his career, looking at him in that tippity top of the category. But obviously a guy that given a day where he gets hot, you got to worry about that damage coming down from Mr. Teddy. Then you got Deft being reunited with his buddy Barrel, and there were still shades. He wasn't the focal point a lot of the time for D plus Kia, but this guy saved some games from the brink of defeat multiple times for D plus Kia, and there's still no question in my mind that he can be a top tier AD carry in the LCK. I love this combo. I love this duo, and I think it is one of those ones that brings out the best in both of them because of what they can offer with their individual skills, their communication. I think it's on point, and especially when you look at the way that this is going to maximize for a player like Def, got to be thinking about the positives this year. As you mentioned, the reuniting, the way that they played together, what pressure that takes off of a player like Def, where he's not making all the shot calling plays and you do have that type of feedback, that type of commanding presence as barrel as your support. I'm banking on Def in his last, last, last dance, giving us a nice treat. The final penultimate, almost finale type of last dance for Def heading in here with KT. Uh, the top three, I think, is the easiest to lock in, and nobody was probably happier this offseason than Viper. Seeing Hanwha Life get delight to pair up alongside him, feel like that is going to take this bot lane together. Probably in contention and the main rivals for Guma and Kyria as best bot lane in the LCK. You got to look through the numbers, even throughout all of the, the mishaps and muddiness that was going on for Hanwha Life. You could see Viper was in form and certainly a player that still has what it takes to be an elite tier LCK ADC returning to the region. This is one of those ones where the numbers I think you're looking at as far as we talked about with Zeka getting the majority of the player of the games for Hanwha Life. I don't think that really tells the tale of what was going on and how hard Viper was playing, how much he was trying for the team. And unfortunately, in so many cases, there wasn't anything that singular ADC position was going to change about the outcomes for Hanwha Life last year. Different outlook this year. As you mentioned, Delight stepping in. We know the role he did with Gen G. If he can bring even half of that for this Hanwha Life roster, I'm expecting a major firepower boost with that duo together. And you know, pays even with a new support lahans is familiar with the gen g organization pays looking for that bounce or carry over from incredible rookie split it's still not enough to be taken the guma god out of that top spot and then it only gets worse when you combine kiria as the top spot for support i mean individually these guys are an absolutely terrifying matchup now that we've seen them at full power paired together and there's no bot lane that's close to them right now at least in korea that is the scariest thing possible is what we saw throughout that world championships the confidence and chemistry that brewed between the two of them and bonded and formed into the strength pack that we've got now between this inseparable bot lane for t1 you look at them both, Guma, of course, accelerating everything and really taking it to the next level, especially in that JDG series, that clinching team fight where he's making everything happen on that Varus. Big time performance from my man, really stepping up. He even got the Jin curse off of his back for T1. Big time year for Guma. And only expecting him and Kyria to develop into an even more lethal duo as we wrap up with supports. Obviously, Kyria in that top spot. Delight, we will see if he continues to be a T1 killer paired alongside his buddy Doran because it didn't matter if it was Alistair, Rakan, Thresh. He was finding engages, finding T1 members across the map throughout all of 2023. 
flat out, Rakan, ban it. Ban it without question. That is a tax. You gotta pay against Delight. Too many teams getting caught with their pants down, getting taken advantage of by the dip dashing dastardly Mr. Rakan looking fly in the bot lane. Yes, Delight, I think that we are gonna see another great year out of him. It's tough because of obviously how much of that success was due to the whole Gen G system and having other players like Chovy involved with it. I think we're gonna get those answers and we're gonna see a pretty good result for Mr. Delight. And if you're looking for the number one reason to be excited about Live Sandbox, or a reason to be excited about Live Sandbox heading into 24, it's John Hoon coming over, star of the LEC, one of, if not the most exciting support players that we got to watch in Europe over the last year or two. And we know this guy's passionate about winning, passionate about popping off, and I'm going to be passionate about watching highlights of him styling on people with Pike. Super happy to see him in the LCK. A little bittersweet, not having him in the LEC anymore, but certainly a situation where you looked at this player, you saw the skill right away when we were talking about this early Australis days, that this is a player that is going to be better, is going to be greater than where he is right now. Absolutely destined for better things. Here we see it in the LCK, stepping up into a bigger league, into the prime time. My man, let's see what you got. And then lastly on this list, Barrel didn't have a great year on DRX, and the DRX roster wasn't great last year. I know this KT roster is supposedly a budget roster, but, I mean, this is a team that has top four potential, and that's only assuming Barrel refines some of that uh, 2022 magic. Maybe being alongside Deft will help him get there. I don't know if we've quite ever had a, an enigma that is Barrel and what he does and what he represents, obviously, in game and the commanding general that he is, all the way to not really doing solo queue, which, yes, doesn't really do solo queue. He's playing Genshin Impact, all these things. Don't mistake that for not studying, not being in there in the film room, not having that homework done to be prepared for the next game. The thing with me, with Barrel, that's going to be big, not only we already talked about with Death. You're looking at the rest of the squad reuniting with Mr. Barrel and their type of comfort with him as that general, as that commanding presence. It's insane to think about the career that Barrel has had. But then you also look at the down years. Those are some pretty bad down years. So I think that this is important that you have a squad. You got players that are on board that have already shown success with Barrel's style of League of Legends. That's a big ticket for me. Sounds like a perfect way to join the Rollster Coaster is the ups and down that Barrel brings. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.